Since this was meant to be a large-scale public artwork or a mural, uh, we made this conscious choice that it could well be a multimedia work. It did not have to stick with conventions of painting alone. And this is where we brought Suryani, who's a ceramic arts practitioner, together with Margaret, who paints or who specializes in painting murals. Now, considering that this artwork is for the AS8 building, which is within NUS, uh, there were two key themes which guided the project. One of the themes was Asia. We definitely had to bring in this thread of how Asia is conceived geographically, culturally, and historically. The second theme guiding the project was the fact that this mural had to necessarily connect with NUS, with the physical campus, and with its community. For the ceramic mural, I'm working together with two other artists, Agnes Lim and Ng Hui Ki. So the idea behind this project is to involve students as well as staff in the creation here of this mural. I thought about how am I going to connect the different departments that are in AS8 that include the Chinese Studies, Japanese Studies, Southeast Asian Studies, South Asian Studies, as well as Malay Studies. One of the things that I thought would connect all these five departments was the sea as well as land in terms of how they are connected yeah, through travel of seafarers from these different countries. So we will, together uh, with the participants um, of the workshop, come up with something like 150 ceramic tiles. This is to ensure that you know, we have enough tiles to choose from in case there are casualties along the way in the process of firing. So from the workshop, we hope to come up with about 60 to 70 tiles and then the artists themselves will contribute about 80 tiles. I think this is a very important project in trying to bring people together. I'm very, very impressed by the tiles that have been created by our participants. It's amazing how in a short while they've acquired the simple skills of doing ceramic tiles, but the creative part which comes from each individual participant are clearly something to be amazed by. The clay that I used for the workshop made up of three different types of clay, a white raku, buff raku, as well as terracotta. The choices for these three different types of clay is to ensure a variation of colours when the clay fires. So a white raku will come out whitish, beige, buff raku will be brownish with black speckles, and the terracotta, which is very familiar to the colours of bricks, can range yeah, from orange to metallic brown. So one of the first things I did was to sort of try to suggest the idea of um, the sea, the land, the sky through colours because it's viewed at a distance to sort of be striking in order to draw people in. So just using that initial mix of very colourful background, it will provide a nice contrast to the tiles. Um, at the same time, draw people into the mural space to then discover the sort of minor details, um, interesting patterns that are within the mural space. Painting a mural is huge scale, so it's very, very physical. Um, just to do the background took us three days, like 10 hours a day, so it was very physically demanding, it's very tiring. But then when it came to the details and the patterns, um, I think of all the patterning, uh, perhaps the patola is the one that is the most challenging um, because that one is more geometric. So that one I have to take into account how to map precise shape, angular shape onto a tree trunk and a branch that is very irregular, rounded uh, and somehow to make it still make sense and make it work. So the flora and fauna, I wanted to um, choose something that is meaningful and specific to um, Singapore, to the region, but also to NUS. Uh, I come from Tembusu College, so I thought it'd be nice to include the Tembusu tree. But of course, the Tembusu tree is also a heritage tree in Singapore. You know, it's found at the back of our $5 note. Uh, and then the, some of the animals, like this Sunda pangolin. Um, we have encountered a Sunda pangolin at our campus. Uh, it's also one of the endangered uh, species. Um, 
the Oriental Pike Home Bill, you know, there's a success story behind that. Um, they have sort of found uh, the bird nesting and doing well in Pulau Ubin. So I thought these are sort of nice animals to include um, yeah, in, in the mural. One of the interesting aspects of this mural is that it's a collaborative process and I love working with Suryani. Um, and I think both of us work well together because we were responding to each other. I even drew in an additional uh, Oriental Pike Hornbill just to create a balance. So I think overall um, that sort of conversation with Suryani and how our works responded to each other, I think that's also one of the interesting aspects of the mural. So one of the first ideas to take our artistic and curatorial process forward was this uh, project campus in a tropical rainforest which is driven by a student body called SAVE, Students Against Violation of the Earth and the Office of Environment Sustainability. And what these two bodies do is uh, to put out a call to the NUS community to regularly photo document rare floral and faunal species which are sited on campus and these photo documentations became the first point of reference for Margaret Tan's uh, animals, birds and vegetation that you see in the mural.